Uh, hey everybody, this is Professor Diffley, History 103, Module 3. Uh, this is like lecture video three. Uh, so we're in Mesopotamia still. Um, just uh, just a couple things here before we move on. Um, uh, one of the things is what you're going to get in Mesopotamia are city-states. We've talked about those before. So even though these cities uh, are pretty close to each other, each one is viewed as its own uh, country in many ways. And they're going to be constant fighting between them why there's limited resources. Um, but one of the other interesting things you're going to find in this talk about in the videos is each city has a patron god, right? So they're all polytheistic. These are gods in the same religion. But each city would believe that a certain city, uh, a certain god, um, uh, was central to them. Uh, you could still worship some of the other gods, but usually had to worship that god uh, centrally there. You're going to get the ziggurats. Uh, they're these massive... Uh, uh, step pyramid uh, temples and things like that. Uh, these were homes of the gods, right, and symbols of their urban identity. Um, and, you know, these temples were uh, like the gods' estate, and it really was that. It wasn't just like a church where you went and you go and pray, a uh, you know, temple, um, like a synagogue or a mosque or that. These were, uh, per, you know, economic uh, forces, right? They had uh, priest officials, servants, and that could even mean slaves, um, commercial activities, someone's got to pay for everything, large workforces, all of that uh, going on there. Uh, and so, and again, they're going to have their own skilled craftsmen as well. So, like I said, I don't want to go too much into this. Uh, you can see a lot of this in the video. This is covered in the text. There's notes to all this. Um, so you're going to have all this on uh, the Mesopotamians uh, here. And you can see uh, that one. You know, th we're going to see they view their gods, uh, most of them do, as human but with extreme emotions. Interesting thing when you're doing this, take note of how the Mesopotamians view their gods and how the Egyptians do. And it's a tale of two different river systems. Um, Nile floods predictably every year is not destructive. Mesopotamia, it is very destructive. Mesopotamians see their gods as vengeful, um, who bring destruction on people, so you have to please them so that they don't send a flood. Um, in Mesopotamia, the sign that the, the, the pharaoh, the king, is doing his job is that the Nile floods every year, which it does, um, and that brings life. And you can see the ziggurats. Again, you can see all this there um, in these areas. Uh, and again, uh, this is uh, the first writing system is going to be developed in uh, Mesopotamia, cuneiform, a web-shaped writing. Here is a, 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 this chart shows uh, how cuneiform uh, changed over time. Uh, what was the real purpose? Bookkeeping. First, first writing in human history, we got to keep records. Who owned what? Who owns what? who uh, owes what to each person, that sort of thing. Keep track of trade. Um, and this is going to be increasingly important. Uh, and then once it's used as that, you know, then more and more people write uh, creatively and things like that. Um, and again, uh, they, you know, write on clay tablets. Uh, it's hot in Mesopotamia in the Middle East. And so, you know, they, they would have soft clay tablets, press these reeds into them, make the shapes, put it out in the sun. They would dry and harden there. Um, and cuneiform uh, could be adapted. More cuneiform uh, and tablets. Again, there's videos on all of this there. Increasingly, the people who can uh, write the scribe class are incredibly important. It is a skill uh, that not few people have. It's a gateway. Um, you know, they control the keys into this. Um, and, you know, if you could control the record keeping, that's really, really important. Just think of all the things you can control. Uh, and so scribes are, you know, um, trained. It was a very, very uh, important position. Not everybody could write. Not everybody was taught to write for various reasons, things like that. Um, you're going to see, you're going to get more and more territorial states. Uh, uh, what that's going to be is, you know, is where one city state is going to conquer others, uh, right? Is going to conquer other city states. Um, and you see this. And what are they uh, fighting over in Sumeria? Again, resources, especially uh, weapons. I um, mean, you can see this, uh, the spread of the Akkadian state. Uh, here's a good view of it here. Areas, uh, uh, Akkadian, Sumerians, um, and you know where and where they're going to take over again. These aren't huge areas, but at the time, uh, that is, you, you can't control large, uh, you know, really, really large areas at this point because communication is very limited. Ability to get around is uh, very limited. So, uh, moving on here to ancient Egypt again. There's a couple videos on um, the required videos. Uh, the the crash course video. There's in uh, ancient Egypt 101. Um, on there uh, as well. Uh, really good videos, you know, that's probably like, you know, 15, 20 minutes uh, tops. Those goes, does a great job of covering ancient Egypt, uh, uh, showing you the sites, showing you uh, a lot of the other stuff. So really take a look at that. 
Um, you know, a couple of the important things here. It is uh, the second of the great civilizations to arise. It is also the first unified country, um, you know, unified state, in the sense that in Mesopotamia, you're going to get city-states, um, you know, each one separate. And Egypt is going to be one uh, unified uh, land, right, under the pharaoh. You're not going to have a king in every city, uh, and that is a first. And as a nature of the way Egypt is, based around the Nile, uh, surrounded by water or desert, so it is pretty insular at this point. Um, and it was easier to control that way. And they all, uh, yeah, really unified. It's very unique uh, in the ancient world in that way. Um, things about Egypt, and this will be in there, but the Nile is the most important thing uh, for them, right? Uh, even to this day, uh, you can see uh, where the, if you go uh, satellite view, uh, the civilization is really based around the Nile. It is, uh, you know, that is where all the green farmland is there. I mean, you can see the different uh, Egyptian uh, kingdoms that come out here, but, you know, really based on this uh, river system. Like I said, <coughs> um, the Nile River floods predictably every year, still does now. The floods um, uh, deposit and renew the soils um, and people could trap the waters that way. And so people just knew where, you know, what the floodplain is like, you build outside of it. Uh, the floods are gonna come each year, renew the soils um, and you can farm in that area and gr great abundance and great riches uh, in this area. Uh, you know, ancient Egypt was a melting pot. You had um, people from North Africa, uh, you know, a little bit further south, Nubians, um, and we'll talk about them much later in the, uh, well, not much, but later in the course, we'll really dive into the Nubians um, there. But you have people from all over, right, from the Middle East, Central Africa, everything. So this is sort of a melting pot of blended culture. Um, you know, people would have been all sorts of shades, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, much in common with Mesopotamia, but distinct. Um, it developed quicker, um, and its geography uh, really does keep it insular. Um, like I said, you know, it's protected by desert and river, uh, and um, a desert and the Mediterranean there. So it is going to be different. Uh, and you can see more and more on this. Uh, just uh, And this is the floodplains, right? So you notice the villages are, are built up a little bit back here. This is the farmlands. This will flood up to about here. Um, and this is a modern picture of what you can really see, uh, you know, how important the Nile is. You know, it's for navigation, for everything, for food, um, uh, water, all that. Uh, you can see there's a modern picture of the uh, floodplains here. You can see the farmers out there in it. Um, you can see agriculture going back there. And these are, uh, you know, going back uh, uh, pretty far. Again, uh, it is the most, uh, sorry about that, uh, the most uh, unified um uh, it is the first unified country. It's the most river-based of all the river civilizations. Uh, really is. It is so much about the river. You'll see that in the videos. Um, let's open uh, common culture too throughout. Um, and uh, again, uh, you know, there will be wars, uh, and that's usually when a uh, you know one dynasty overthrows the other um, for much of its history. But uh, again, it's pretty uh, pretty peaceful, pretty unchanging. Um, again, this is. Let me just show you this again. The importance of the Nile today. This is uh, from Google Maps, a satellite view. You can see. Uh, the green uh, going through uh, here um, and desert all around it. Uh, and so you can see how the country is still built around the Nile. Um, and again, you can look through all this there. Uh, this is just, you know, um, it's covered in the text. It is uh, in the notes here. It's in the video. I don't want to go over it uh, too much because, again, I don't want you uh, too many of these lecture videos here. Um, a couple things too, uh, the, uh, the videos, uh, if you're interested in the uh, mummies, there is a required video on how a TED Ed, there's a couple TED Ed videos uh, that I put in there, and they're shorter ones, usually five minutes long and tops, uh, about the mummification process, um, something about, you know, the construction of this. You know, the pyramids, um, uh, you know, were uh, places of uh, resting place for uh, the monarchs, right? The Great Pyramids of Giza. Um, they are royal tombs, right? Um, their original appearance, they didn't look like they did here. Um, they were actually, uh, you know, smooth, uh, you know, plastered over, uh, painted with gold domes. They would shine there. That's all been weathered away. I mean, you can see some of these smaller um, uh, uh, pyramids there. Uh, you know, why? Because you had to learn how to build this. If you go there in Giza, uh, you can see some of these older attempts, right? That before they got it right and these massive, um, uh, massive, uh, really tombs is what they are. It shows uh, the Pharaoh, which means king. That's all it means. It means kings of the, uh, uh, of the two Egypts, the upper and lower Egypt, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, here's a modern picture of it, you know, with the uh, city in the background. Uh, here's it with the Sphinx. Um, and that, this is a great Sphinx of uh, Egypt there. Uh, 
<clears throat> you know, the pyramids, uh, you know, amazing feats of engineering. Uh, you know, there's no mortar in them. Um, they, uh, you know, th these stones are fit uh, perfectly um, to fit together. You know, there's all sorts of, uh, you know, conspiracy theories, must have been aliens, things like that. Um, we know they were able to build this. Um, now, uh, so how did they move them? Well, they, what they did was build large canals off the uh, Nile. They'd, uh, they'd uh, use them on the Nile, right? The Nile uh, flows from south to north into the Mediterranean. So the stones came from the south, they flowed them up there, and they would literally build these gigantic, um, uh, really, canals linking the pyramids um, to uh, the river. How do we know? We found them. We found boats over there. Uh, yeah, not we. Archaeologists have. Um, and so that we, they know, we know they were able to do this. Um, when people say, oh, it had to be, you know, aliens or something like that, I, you know, I like the idea of aliens too, but it doesn't give humans enough credit, right? Uh, humanity has been able to do amazing things over time um, with uh, lesser, what we today consider lesser technology. Remember, it was cutting edge back then. Just remember this. We are at the you know forefront of technology and human existence, but just think when they look back at us 50, 100 years, they're going to be you know shocked at you know how limited we have, right? It's you know think of some with your parents or uh, grandparents, how you know think of the changes they've seen or how technologically you know, uh, you know problems they have in, in adapting to it. Just think later how how you know how much change is going to be, and people are going to be like, oh, how would they get by with so little? That's just the way uh, you know, the world works. In that. Um, but again, make sure to take a look at the videos. Uh, you can see about the um, cosmic order. And again, there's a video on that, a suggested video. Uh, one of the other is the Egyptian Book of the Dead, a guide for the underworld. Um, make sure to watch that video. Uh, that is, it's not mentioned in your text. Um, it is a really interesting. Essentially, this Book of the Dead, the Egyptians were fascinated and consumed by the afterlife and what to do in the Book of the Dead is really a guidebook on how to get through the underworld, um, you know, with, you know, fit with what you should say when the gods ask you things and that. Uh, watch the video. It's really interesting and gives you an idea about how the Egyptians thought as much about not just the world around them, but with their eternal souls, so to speak, of what the next world would be like. It just speaks to the importance of that to their religion. Um, and, you know, here's some more on the gods uh, of or or Osiris and Horus. Um, and again, uh, you have the dying God who rules over the netherworld, um, <clears throat> can be in charge of the mummies. Uh, one thing, the Egyptians did not worship animals. Um, so then why did their gods seem to have animal heads? The belief was that the gods could, uh, speak or show signs through animals. So each God had an animal associated with it. So when it's depicted in pictures like this, it is not that it actually, uh, you know, they always, they had a uh, bird heads, right? They were, uh, they looked human. This is just show that this is, you know, Osiris and the, uh, ha the falcon headed, uh, God, right? The falcon, uh, is connected with them. So, you know, the Egyptians did not worship animals. They thought animals were important and could, uh, show signs, uh, from the gods, things like this. Here's some more uh, depictions of, uh, the afterlife in the Egyptian religion, uh, that, um, you know, they really did. They were, they, everybody believed in magical powers, um, uh, the importance to commoners. You had all sorts of amulets, omens, uh, uh, you know, people watching, you know, what are the animals doing? Will that tell us something about that? Uh, divination, trying to figure out what the gods want, uh, either through, you know, reading entry, all sorts of things. Um, and uh, so that's a way to look at this. Uh, they also had writing, they had hieroglyphs um, and a cursive uh, a script as well hieroglyphs uh, and this cursive script, which is hieratic. It's also known as demotic. Uh, your, te your text, let's see, I use demotic here, um, and then I use hieratic uh, uh, in, in this slide. Um, both are acceptable. Uh, the text uh, uses hieratic, so that's what uh, we're going to use, um, but demotic writing is more of a script. Um, it's free-flowing, right, instead of the uh, uh, hieroglyphs, were, which are pictures and things like that. Uh, hieroglyphs are based on... Um, Again, uh, they're ideograms, um, uh, you know, for ideas and sounds, but they're pictorial images. Uh, this is a, a hieroglyph actually meant sacred carving. So it was used in, uh, you know, uh, official documents, um, uh, you know, on temples, things like that. Uh, heretic writing is more of like, you know, handwriting, and that was used by uh, everyday people in business and, and things like that. Um, you know, it's called sexhat, um, and that is heretic uh, script there. And this is a very old papyrus paper. Um, uh, See some, it literally meant writing for documents, right? Everyday script uh, there. 
Um, so, and again, you can look through uh, the Egypt stuff. Make sure to watch the video there. Uh, uh, um, yeah, we could go on. This is not obviously, we're going to come back to Egypt over time. This is more of an overview. We're going to talk about them over and over. You could do entire courses, entire careers in Egypt, Egyptian history. So again, uh, if you're interested, uh, let me know. I can point you to other sources, but we will come back to ancient Egypt. This is more just an overview uh, here. And especially this is really through the old kingdom. So the oldest of the first of the three. Egyptian time periods. Um, all right, so that is the end of lecture video three. Uh, we'll pick up and we'll, uh, in lecture video four about the Indus River Valley.